Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Be Brilliant People podcast with me, Mike Bedford, your host today, and my special guest, Isaac Harvey. Hi, Isaac. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me today. Uh, no, we're, we're very we're very honoured to have you on, on the show as, as a guest today. Thank you so much for giving up your, your time and coming on and, and being our guest. Um, so we have two formats of this show available for our listeners. We have uh, a YouTube format, which features the, the, the video of, of me and Isaac chatting away and talking to each other. And then we also have the audio only format as well, available on Spotify for our listeners as well. So I try to make the show uh, available in multiple formats for people so they can digest the content in whichever way suits them best. But uh, yeah, we're going to get into introducing Isaac in a moment. But again, just for context for our, for our listeners who might be joining us for the first time today, who we'll, are we'll tuning in, some more regular listeners, but others who might be new to the podcast as well, uh, who, who will know that the, the podcast is, is primarily focuses on all around um, uh, inclusion and belonging with neurodiversity being at, at its core. Um, for those who, who can see, obviously you can see I've got my sunflower lanyard on today because I'm neurodivergent myself as well. But I, I often bring guests on who, who aren't neurodivergent um, to too, because I think it's really important to have a wider conversation, um, particularly when we're talking about belonging, inclusion. And also, let's not forget that um, neuro, neurodivergent and neurodiversity sits, sits alongside disability um, too. So I'm, I'm really pleased, actually, linking, trying to link as seamlessly as, as I can in, into that point to be able to bring along a, a fantastic um, guest today who, who does absolutely so much stuff in this space. It'd be impossible for me, I think, to sit and kind of list it all. Uh, and he'll be able to tell you a bit more about that um, when, I, when I hand over and introduce him in a moment. But my guest today, Isaac Carvey, is a real kind of superstar in, 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 in kind of the space of disability and accessibility and inclusion and, and belonging. He's always doing something and going somewhere and, and doing something and kind of raising the bar in this space as well. So he's, he's definitely someone I've been kind of keeping an eye on for a while and someone I wanted to bring on to this uh, podcast because I just think Isaac's got so much so much value to add um, and, and I think will bring so much value to to you, the listener, today as part of this conversation. But listen, this, this podcast is, is exactly that. It's a conversation. Me, me and Isaac's had some kind of like preamble before we came in. We had a bit of a chat and I told him about what what's what with the podcast and said, look, you know, I'm not going to give you a script to questions and things I'm, I'm going to ask you. It's, it's not about that. It's about just an authentic conversation between two guys in, in, in this instance talking about lots of things, including disability, including maybe neurodiversity and inclusion and belonging and, and what else we might get into as well. But yeah, well, like like I always say, we'll 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 go where the conversation takes us, actually, and I think that that'll make a much better um, listening experience for you, the listener, uh, as well. But that's me rambling on for absolutely ages there, the longest like introduction ever to a podcast. <laughs> I can hear Isaac laughing away there in the background. If if you can't see him, you can hear him. But let let me introduce you to today's superstar guest today, Isaac Harvey. Isaac, welcome to the Be Brilliant People podcast. No, it's great to be here and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, another one of our conversations because we definitely do go down the rabbit hole when we start talking. So. <laughs> and and, and that's, that's, that's nothing new for me going down rabbit holes, Isaac. I'll, I'll, I have to warn you and, and, and I can kind of, you know, talk a lot and go down many different rabbit holes, often at the same time as well, <laughs> multiple rabbit holes all in the same conversation as well. So. You know, if you find that we're kind of going down too many rabbit holes, then kind of then let, let me know that we might need to come back to the centre rabbit hole at some point as well, you know. Because I'm always mindful that, especially if I'm talking to someone who might not kind of follow follow those many rabbits as I'm following in my head at any, same, at any one time, that can be a little bit confusing for people too. So, you know, if it kind of feels like it's uh, there's, there's too many rabbits running around and going down lots of different holes and kind of say, Hang on a minute, Mike. What were we talking about just there? <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's it, it's all good. But Isaac, you you tell us tell for the benefit of our listeners. Obviously, I've been following you for a while on LinkedIn. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of everything that you do, and I think you're an awesome human being, and you do so many great things as well. But let let's kind of just dial that back a bit. And and you you for the benefit of our listeners, some who may not have heard of you, tell us a little bit about you. Who is Isaac Carvey, and and, and what does he do? 
Gosh, that is a big question. And as we talk about rabbit holes, I could take this in so many different directions of uh, who is Isaac Harvey. Um, but I, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So, I, yeah, so I'm Isaac. I was born with a disability called limb pelvic hypoplasia, which means I have no arms, short legs. I have a weak pelvis, so I'm not able to walk, but I have a wheelchair which gets me from A to B. Um, I've also got scoliosis, which is the curvature of the spine, um, but that's been corrected by metal work. And on top of all of that, I have acid reflux, um, which is stomach problems. Um, but even with all of those obstacles um, that I have, I've still been able to um, achieve great things um, and get out there and really use my voice and show people what can be done, even if you do have a disability. Um, that's mainly thanks to my friends and family um, who have, because of my upbringing, upbringing, have always supported me and never really treated me any differently. So when I've said, oh, I want to do a skydive or go skiing, um, they've never said, no, you, you're not able to do that. They feel like, if it's out there and can be done, then why not? And I've always pushed me to go out there and achieve, um, which has definitely helped when it comes to overcoming obstacles with my disability. But the challenging part of my life was my mental health. Um, even though I was able to do all of these things internally, I wasn't exactly happy and I couldn't really understand why. So I really, so I started um looking at external factors to see if that would help with my life internally so thinking that i needed to be in a relationship for happiness um finally got into one and i still wasn't happy um being seen as this inspirational motivational um figure in the world and thinking like you know i can't really talk about this openly because i don't want to be seen as a disappointment and also it was something that I only I thought I was dealing with, so I never really opened up about it. Um, and also um, being a video editor and content creator at the start of the journey of that, I wanted to, um, I guess you could say, become this influencer um, because I just love being creative and doing that. But that didn't really work out. Um, so all those three factors kind of came together and got me to a bit of a breaking point where I was like, okay, I really need to learn about myself and my well-being. So for the first time in my life, I took a step back. I must have been 24, 25 at this time. Took a step back and started learning about mental health and mindset. And that's where I came across the law of attraction and how we think through and speak is the reality we create. And once I had that kind of view, and being able to take a step back and have that self-awareness was when my eyes opened up to the wider world and then realizing that my disability has always been my biggest strength and that's what's got me out there doing all of the different things that you see me doing on LinkedIn. Um, and it's get, allowed me to have this conversation with you. So, you know, it's all come to, to come together. Oh, no, it's, it's honestly, we're, we're absolutely privileged to have you as, as a guest on, on, on this podcast and I really love the way you talked about kind of like reframing mindset um there uh, I think it's 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 really important isn't it as well to kind of turn turn situations around into positives as well but that's it's not an easy thing to do is it um as well because often we can find particularly um when you're disabled whether that's whether that's uh physically disabled whether that, whether that's invisible whether that's visible you can find that there's so many things that get in the way isn't there kind of even if you kind of come into this with such a positive mindset something can kind of just get in your way and you just kind of it can set you back as well so I wonder how how, how does that kind of play out in, in in your daily kind of like routines and stuff then you know you, you you're a really positive mindset type of a guy and stuff but when kind of I've, I've often heard it said that it's actually society that disables us 
you know, and, and how how do we get around that then from a positive mindset perspective when actually there's so, there's so many things out there that are just get in our way? So I would like to say, so I am I see as being positive, but the way I kind of see it is like I have a realistic mindset preparing me for, for any situation. So, mm-hmm. um, so through this journey um, with my mental health, I was learning about the law of attraction and the importance of meditation and having this, as you say, a positive mindset. And I did a lot of this and I was really fascinated by all of it for a whole year of um, doing this. Um, and the more I was doing it, the more I was learning, the more I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better in myself. So a year went by and I thought, okay, I'm at a place now where I don't need to do any more learning. I don't need to do any more meditation. I get it now. I don't need to do any more of this. And within two weeks, I was back to square one again, feeling really down and upset and and really confused, as in like, I've learned all this for a whole year. How can I be back to square Mm. one again? And that's when I realized it's a journey rather than an end destination. And to have a bit more of a realistic mindset has allowed me to prepare myself for good and bad because you know life's a roller coaster you're always going to get good and bad but being able to take a step back and have a different perspective on it I think that's allowed me to have a more focused mind and one that sees the silver linings in things Um, and you know with anything as we said before we started recording you know some of everything happens for a reason uh, well, yeah. the way I well the way we see it, um, and how some things may be a learning experience, or um, that person in on that day t- who said a certain thing to me was of the internal feelings that I was feeling, and that was needed to come out. So it's um, yeah, being able to just take a step back and have that self awareness about everyday yeah. situations has definitely helped me day to day in having this mindset yeah no i think i think you're right i think it's it's so important to be able to kind of reflect isn't it and to be able to kind of like stand back um and and be able to kind of like self-reflect on 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 things that have happened and use that as a learning opportunity for yourself for your own kind of self-growth continuous mm-hmm. self-growth because from speaking to you as i know you, you you're someone who's constantly striving for like self-growth and, and 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 to learn and seeking out new opportunities to 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 learn from the widest possible you know diverse eclectic um groups of of, of people and opportunities um we were just talking um funnily enough weren't we again before you came on the podcast about how i was uh, both impressed and, and a little bit envious to kind of see that you'd been along to what felt like to me was kind of networking kind of meetup group that I would have loved to have been at for for neurodivergent um, people. Tell us a little, tell us a little bit, a bit more about that, and tell us how, how you get how you get involved in what sort of things do you get involved in then, Isaac, in terms of all the different you know groups and and uh, and and things that you you do and you're involved with that you're active in and. And, and and how does it all come about and and, and what's your your role and as a kind of like uh, i guess as you, you as, a, as a kind of role model and, and and kind of activist and speaker in in in, in this space lot of there's a lot of questions there <laughs> <And I'm> also, <laughs> i've thrown about 10 questions at you there there's a job <laughs> to kind of like try to kind of uh, my apologies i can do that as well no, that's I, fine. I, I mean i could talk about the event first um the, yeah. So, actually, no. I'll answer the, the second question first because um, how do I get myself involved in everything I, I do? So, um, again, going back to um, getting into this advocacy role, um, when I left school, I knew that I didn't want to do the nine to five, um, yeah. and. I, as I said, I've always had a creative mind. So I wanted to express that through video and the things that I would get up to. And when I was doing these videos, 
I never really spoke about disability, even though I was showcasing what can be done with a disability. I never really spoke about it at the forefront of the of the videos. And loads of friends and family were like, oh, you know, you should really talk about disability in, in mm. the videos. You could really change people's perspectives on things. And I thought, oh, why do I have to do that for? It doesn't really make any sense, you know? Mm -hmm. I just want to be creative. I, I want to make some fun videos. Yeah, um, yeah. So friends and family kept telling me, I kept on ignoring them until I was given an opportunity to do a public speaking engagement um, up in Birmingham, talking about uh, different obstacles that I face um, yeah. and how I may have to plan things way in advance or I may need assistance to do certain activities. But once that's all done, I still am able to do the adventurous things that I do. Um, and I remember finishing that public speaking engagement. It's probably one of the first that I just clearly has a point in, um, that's made a point in my head um, where once I finished, a woman came up to me and she said, oh, I get severe legs, legs in my, sorry, I get severe pains in my legs. And, after, and I'm always complaining about life, but after hearing your story, it's really changed my perspective on things. Um, and that was kind of the first time I felt or known about the impact I was making on people. Mm. Um, so that's when I started implementing that into my videos. And then for my advocacy work and being a bit more outspoken was when I joined LinkedIn in 2021. Again, a platform that was always advertised to me as the professional Facebook. And I was like, well, why do I need to have another Facebook for, especially <laughs> yeah. if it's professional, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was, it was, I started off sharing um, what the work I do with wheels and wheelchairs. So a little context about that, that's um, yeah. roller skaters pushing wheelchair users. Um, yeah. And I thought, okay, it'd be good to get maybe professional eyes on what we do because we've been on other social medias, but LinkedIn might be a place for us to get sponsors and other bits and pieces there. And it was, so I started off posting about that for a couple of months and then July came round and that's when I learned about Disability Pride Month, uh, a month I'd never really heard of before. Mm. And I just... I was like fascinated by it that I wrote a post um, about it for my own experience um, saying, oh, it's great that we're able to celebrate disability in this way. And it went, I guess you could say semi-viral um, where I guess I, it felt like I'd been given a voice to the community and people were accepting to hear it. And that's when I started being more of an advocate talking about the different things I do. And that's when I got to connect with so many within the disability community um, who I've been able to learn so much from um, and being able to be able to go to different events, such as the one that happened this week, uh, an organization called, sorry, a nonprofit organization called Joyfully Different, which is um, supports neurodiverse uh, entrepreneurs um, and allows people to come together so they can basically do things differently um, that works for different individuals and so that they have the support. And they had a networking event in Rygate, um, which was yeah solely for neurodiverse, but I was invited by one of my friends who has ADHD and he was saying, oh, it would be great for you to come and support. And I said, yeah, absolutely because I'm all about learning and growing in this space and community. Um, and I was bl literally blown away when I entered the room and I was greeted by these color coded cards where each card had a different color and uh, they meant different things. So red meant um, you don't, so these were like social cues as well. Um, yeah. so for people to know uh, and people's energies and communication. So red men, you know, I don't wish to be approached, um, but I'm happy to be part of the conversation. Orange men, you can approach me, but I may not answer you. 
and then green meant you can approach me and I'll be willing to speak back. Um, and I thought, you know, I don't really, I don't see myself as neurodiverse or, um, um, can't think of the words now. Um, I don't identify myself as neurodiverse. Been on the um, spectrum. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I've even myself, I, my social battery goes in certain spaces and, yeah. you know, usually in, <laughs> in these, in, when it comes to networking, you feel like you have to keep talking and mm. if you walk away, it's really awkward or, oh, sorry, I don't feel like talking. You just feel a bit awkward, but having these yeah. social cards, co sorry, colored coded cards, I feel breaks that barrier. And then people yeah. know from the get go, okay, I won't speak to you now or, oh, yeah, that's the person will be happy to speak, you know. I think yeah, it was yeah. such a barrier breaking and that it was st structured. So, you know, it wasn't that awkward small talk or, you know, yeah. they had uh, arts and craft table and they had fidget spinners and yeah, just stuff for everybody to feel like comfortable in that setting. And I thought it was amazing and more networking need to get on board and implement that into other events. Yeah, no, that's, that sounds absolutely awesome. And I think it, it, <clears throat> aligns with some of the things we were talking about off air doesn't it again thinking about you know when, when we often think about um accessibility and, and inclusion we tend to like pigeonhole it don't we to kind of like certain people or certain characteristics and disabilities and, and whatnot when actually what we should be thinking about is actually there's so many people that can benefit from just by being more inclusive right you know because inclusion benefits everybody it doesn't just kind of benefit one or two people right it's it just makes things better for for, for, for everybody and by like you mm. just said there you know you might not necessarily identify in, in your in your case isaac has been neurodivergent but you certainly found some things there that that you thought actually this this is is really good and i can see the benefits in in, in doing this too so therefore you know inclusion is benefiting a wider audience as well isn't it i think it's just about how we we learn to kind of adapt to the, the conversation around what inclusion and accessibility means right oh absolutely um because once you they say once you design for one you're basically designing for all like one who may have more needs or adjustments in place once you design it for that one person it usually find that it's a, helping a lot of other people um mm. As we said again off air, we said a lot off air, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, once so, like for example, a a ramp up into uh, automatic door into a building, everyone benefits into those kind of spaces. It's not yeah. just myself. Um, yeah, yeah. People w who may have um, deliveries with the um holding loads of parcels mm. uh, benefits from that or children with buggies benefit from that mm. you know it's yeah. a lot, all of these different benefits people have from having something accessible and it's yeah, yeah yeah really yeah as you say inclusion is for everybody everyone benefits no i couldn't agree more and one of the things i often talk about um, being as someone who, who works pretty extensively in, in, in neurodiversity in, in, in the workplace is, is around, you know, whenever we're designing anything, design for the hundred, don't design for the for the ten percent or the twenty percent or the thirty percent, whatever. Design for the hundred percent. You know, use use universal design principles to make sure that it benefits everybody. You know, always and. That way, you're just creating you're just creating better spaces, better places where everyone can 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 thrive, regardless of of, of how they identify or what the challenges or needs are. It's about and it just creating spaces where everyone can thrive and and and, and be the best. Surely, absolutely yes. Um, it reminds me of the video which came up last week, or well, anyway, during March it was World well, Down Syndrome Day. Um, I don't know if you saw that oh, video yeah. that I, yeah, I posted yeah. um, because that was just such a powerful video and could be used way beyond just Down syndrome, just every yeah. disability or oh, anyone really. It, 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 I think that was a video that was targeting everyone because yeah, it was. It, so basically the premise of the video was if you assume I can't 
do something, then that's what's going to happen. But if you yeah. assume that I can uh, achieve more, then I probably will achieve more. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, we should change assumptions, but also, you know, there's a bit of, I'm on the fence about assumptions because on one side, assumptions can be quite dangerous if you don't speak to the individual. Um, yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. But, but also assuming positively i think should be more out there but i feel like more open dialogue of actually what can we put in place for you so that you can be at your best you know what is yeah. much better than thinking oh he's in a wheelchair he's not going to be able to do this this and this it's uh kind of like seeing what can be done rather than what can't be done no, totally. And we're good. You've just reminded me of that video, which was brilliant, by the way. And it's got that went mm. viral, didn't it? That 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 kind of video with the uh, the, the the Downs um, lady. Uh, you know, obviously being such a fantastic person that could could do so much, but obviously all the assumptions were made that she she couldn't and and was treated basically like a child. You know, uh, which which was a load, a load of nonsense. I think I agree with you, um, Isaac, on this. I'm a little bit on the fence about kind of. Uh, the whole assumptions thing because I think it can get quite muddy can when yeah. you kind of make assumptions. So I think for me, I don't know your, what your thoughts are. I'll ask you anyway. But yes. I, I I I much prefer the kind of ask rather than assume as well. Kind of you know if you're not sure about anything, then then ask ask someone. And because we're all the thing that worries me about assumptions is because we're all so unique individuals. Mm. We all have so so many different things going going on that it kind of can get quite sort of broad brushy. I think when you go down the assumptions kind of route, I think. But when when you ask the person concerned, then there can't be really any kind of uh, misinterpretation or ambiguity about that. If you're asking directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak, then that person's telling you exactly, you know, what 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 they they need, what they want from 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 you to, in order to be able to defy. But I think. I don't know about you again, but one of the things I feel often lacks is is, is that should the questions being asked in the mm. first place, and you know there could be multiple reasons for why people don't ask the questions. I mean, that could be fear. There could be the fear yeah. element there, fear of kind of saying or, or doing the wrong thing, so therefore the question doesn't get asked. Therefore, people make assumptions. But the problem with assumptions is assumptions can be wrong. I think yeah. that that's that's what worries me about assumptions. I don't know. I'm rambling a little bit there, but what what do you think? What's your thoughts on all that? So I am a strong believer as well in you know if you don't no sorry let me say again. So basically in in this world, if you don't know, you don't know, and that's like yeah. a fact. Like not yeah. everyone knows everything, and I do believe that people should ask more questions. Um, as long as they're well intended, yes, um, yeah, 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 and I and you are willing to learn um, yeah. and want to learn, but I also think it goes beyond that. Um, yeah. And again, it's down to choice as well. But we have some people in any community who feel like, oh no, you shouldn't be asking questions, but then also are the same people who complain that people aren't getting it right and it's like you yeah. can't have it both ways um sure. obviously look if someone says oh can you tell me about your medical history then of course you don't have to answer that but if someone no. says oh how can i support you or um yeah it, it, if how can i support you yeah, then yeah. i feel like we should it should be a two-way street you know we, we yeah. should be able to answer the question however yeah. detailed or not that you want to and then for the other person to learn from it and kind of implement it in whatever role that they may have um yeah. i feel like this way of real learning has got to be a two-way street but also realizing that people have a choice of answering or not but yeah. again choice as in what you say or not then you can't complain if you don't say something and then someone gets it wrong <laughs> so. yeah no, I think you make some really good points. So I think you're absolutely spot on. I think questions have to come from a position of, of positive intent, first and foremost. That's absolutely mm. paramount. I work quite a lot in coaching space, and there's, there's um, a, a word that gets thrown around quite a bit in coaching space, which is unconditional positive regard. 
Uh, I don't know if, if, if you are listeners are familiar with that, but essentially what that is, it's, it's always coming to a conversation with anybody from a complete space of, 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 of treating the person as a complete blank canvas, having no preconceptions, having no bias whatsoever, just completely blank canvas conversation with that person and treating it from a really positive perspective, then asking you questions. So you've got no kind of like preconceived con ideas about what that's going to be, what the person's going to need, what the person's going to say. It's about ultimately listening to that person positively and asking the right questions to be able to support that person in terms of whatever it is that they need. So, for example, if I'm a, if I'm a, a manager in the workplace and I'm working with, with, with people who might have communication challenges or communicate differently, then one of the, one of the questions I can ask is, what do you need from me in terms of, how I communicate with you or how we communicate on the team. I think that's mm. a really, and again, like you said there, Isaac, it's up to the individual then as to how they want to answer that or whether they want to answer that. Obviously, if they don't, then things probably aren't going to change that much. Yes, but the power yeah. then is in, is in that person's gift to kind of say, actually, I'm really glad that you've asked me that question because I'd much, you know, and even if you think about the colour coordinated cards things, that great example that you gave there about how it includes Actually, what I think would be really good in this team if we introduced like a color coordinated card scheme for people, you know, who might kind of actually, you know, have have challenges around communication at certain times, don't, don't need to be disturbed or, or, or kind of, you know, we can have an open kind of signal to people when you, it is okay to kind of talk to me or others and things like that. But if that question isn't asked, then that those ideas don't ever come out. So we never know about those. So those don't get implemented as well so for me it's again, again it absolutely should always be from a positive intent perspective but i think uh, i think we're in agreement on on, on this and it's like tell me if, if we're not i think we we shouldn't be afraid of the questions asking the questions but ultimately we should respect the other person's uh mm. right to choose whether to answer that or not but then it's their accountability sits with them then as to what change what change happens by not responding to that I think is, is am I right in summarizing what we've captured there? Yeah, basically two way street. It's it's definitely got to be seen as a two way street respecting both parties. Basically, I just feel like that's how we become better allies, better at supporting each other, and yeah. kind of striving for a more inclusive world. If we kind of have that approach to things. I think it all boils down to respect at the end of the day. Yeah. If we can just respect one another and actually and give people time to yeah. speak, I think that's that's all that matters really. You know, that's what being a good human being is about. <laughs> at the end yeah, of the day, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I often say, um, and, and you might find this in terms of the work that you do, a lot of what I say doesn't feel like it's rocket science. You know, it's, it's, mm. it's, it feels like a lot of it's, it's, it is, comes down to being a good person and doing the right thing. But somehow, somewhere, that gets lost and we forget how to, have, how to engage with, with people on, on a, a human level, um, I, I think. Mm. Um, what, what do you think then perhaps uh, some of the biggest challenges that people have around kind of engaging in the conversation? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I feel like, again, it, what we speak about, you know, some people just may not have the confidence to speak. And because of that, they just don't know how to engage because, you know, we live in a society with a lot of cancel culture um mm. and the point of oh gosh what if i get this wrong you know people are not going to like me for it but i think it's human we're not going to get it right first time um and we're not going to get it perfect so i feel just kind of just putting your head in first and just asking the questions i, I feel it's saying that i do um obviously there's a time and place like you don't just say anything at any given time but I feel like for my own personal growth is just asking the questions and having conversations like these and really learning from each other um, or just, in, you know, engaging in people's posts. Maybe you don't even have to ask a question, but just looking at the different people within the communities to be like, oh, OK, I didn't know about that. So I, I've learned that now or. Um, yeah. maybe a comment asking a question um, and then 
hopefully someone would respond with it. But I, I think it's just kind of, yeah, either observing and is a way of being part of a conversation, but also ask uh, the main point of what we've been saying is asking questions um, and having that open dialogue. I think it's so important. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. What do you think we can do then, uh, even in the disabled neurodivergent community and, and, and other communities where the, the the challenge around the conversation exists? What what can we do then to kind of create, I guess, safety where people feel they can ask the questions? What's, how can we better advocate that we want the questions to be asked, you know, it's safe. Please ask us the questions. We're not afraid of the questions. Actually, we want to engage in a dialogue. What what role do you think we have there to kind of open that up? Um, I feel we have some responsibility of educating. Um, mm-hmm. Again, not everyone wants to be an educator, which is mm. totally understandable. And I do respect that because, you know, I've met some people with disabilities who just don't want to advocate for disability and they just want to get on and do work and be an actor or a teacher or whatever. And that's totally fine. Um, But I feel those within the advocacy space should definitely be open for these kind of conversations um, and be able to um, see see people's perspectives um mm. in different ways different ways of seeing things um and as well as engaging with each other's content um i feel it's kind of if you come if so like for like for me if i came with an approach which was really negative and um always complaining or always angry um, which again is a valid feeling as well because there's a lot of frustrations with the obstacles that are yeah. faced in today's society. But if I only had that approach and I was very negative about things, then I wouldn't be surprised if anyone wanted to not engage with me then. Mm. Um, so I think it's how we approach things to making people feel comfortable in feeling like they can ask questions or wanting to engage in, in certain ways. Um, so I think it's just got to be a bit balanced because mm-hmm. in my post, I always try and have a balanced view. Even if something really does frustrate me, I, mm. do, I do try and see it from both sides. Um, or if I have an opinion, I try and open it up for others to give their views on it. Um, mm. I never, I'm never this person who says, oh, what I've said is right and that's it. I come from this is my opinion um now it's for you to make your own mind up about it or I'd like to hear what you have to say um yeah and showcasing what's out there so I think it's yeah it's got to be it's got to be done from a balanced view yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no you're right and I, I'm, I'm learning again so much from our conversation as we're talking um as well and I think it's the whole thread running through this is it's 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 we're constantly learning aren't we um and and every Mm. conversation that we have every dialogue that we have is a learning opportunity Mm. for 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 us to learn more about each other and to learn more about how we can support each other uh, uh, and learn how we can do things differently as well i wonder if maybe you could share with us what some of your 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 great examples of of good and, and great examples of bad have been recently for you when you've been out and about on your travels and doing all the great work that you've been doing? Um, okay. So uh, this is a very memorable week because it was, um, a lot what happened in one week. It was really crazy. Um, so it was in November. Um, and I had a lot of events on that week. So it was Tuesday. So, have you heard of Purple Tuesday? Uh, Purple Tuesday is is that a gosh? So, I know we had something in the neurodiversity space around purple. Uh, I don't know if it's linked. So, Purple Tuesday is the first Tuesday in uh, November, which gets businesses to do um, at least commit to one thing a year 
to make the disabled customer experience better. Okay. Um, and it's celebrated on that day um, in different countries across the world. Um, and in London, we are we go on to the Piccadilly lights very early in the morning, um, which has just a whole Purple Tuesday on there, um, which is really cool. Just a very yeah. early start. Um, you have to be there at like 7.30 in the morning. It's ridiculous. Time to be yeah. out and about um, in London, but it's like really great, and people come together. Um, and that was that. Uh, d- the day is very long, um, but it's a great chance for the community to come together and hear what businesses are doing to make customer experiences better. Um, yeah. Within you know the website, they may do a slight change in their website, or they are doing a round table with people with disabilities so they can know how they make their products better. You know, all different types of things, um, which is great. And they have resources for companies to do better within that world for people with disabilities. Um, And then the day after I was collecting my MBE. um, Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. (laughs) um from king charles and um being able to because you know for everything i do i don't really do it for awards or recognition yeah but being able to and it's this minds has come over time but i've now come to the realization that all of these awards and recognition is kind of like a a reflection on what the community can do if they put their mind to it and showing yeah. what people with disabilities or neurodivergent individuals can achieve if yeah. um, if we are given the right support um, and we can really have our voices heard if if we come collectively together. I saw it as a, an award that's not just me, but, you know, collectively I've, I've learned so much from people. So uh, this is a collective award, the MVE. Um, which is what and I love then, about you, Isaac. You're so humble as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it was all about me, it would get to my head and all that, though, and we don't want that now. <laughs> 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 um, and then that same day, see, this was a crazy 24 hours. And that same day, I was going to the Disability Power 100 because I was on the top 100 list as well. Um, so it was a crazy 24 hours. And that was kind of like a real high within the disability world and a couple of days later i was meant to be celebrating a friend's birthday um in cambridge um and i probably had one of the worst ex- travel experiences that i've ever had okay. um so everything was booked for me to get to cambridge um yeah. so i got on the train and and that was all fine I mean, the first part of the journey was fine. And then once I got to Cambridge, um, no one was there with the ramp. Um, yeah. So some, luckily it was the last station and I didn't have to kind of like go on to other stations, which is one of my dreads when I can't get off the train. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like a next station. But luckily this was the last stop. Some kind passengers found someone and said, um, oh, there's a wheelchair on. And they said, oh, you know, did you did did you let them know that you were coming? I said, did you tell the staff that you was coming here? And I said, yeah, of course. Well, they got me on. Um, <laughs> and, and they said, oh, no, we didn't hear anything. So they got me off um, and they were going to help me to the exit to then find that the staff member who was helping me wasn't told that the lift was out to get to the exit. Yeah. So he was like, okay, I'm not sure what we're going to do. So he said, okay, um, what we'll do is we'll get you on to the next station um, where we'll get you a taxi back, which they have to do. I said, okay, that's fine. Then they found out that the trains that were going to the next station wouldn't have the right ramps for me to get there. Yeah. Um, so Gosh. they couldn't get me to the next station, which meant they had to get me on to another another station further on where were you now Isaac were you you heading kind of like (laughs) Penzance or something by now yeah it it felt like I was in the Lake District at this point but um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I think it was Ely it must have been Ely 
Right. Um, and so quite some stuff. way from where you wanted to be, basically. Yeah, so I eventually got to Ely. This is when I met my friend who was coming with me to the party. Um, she was with me. We got to um, Ely. I think it was Ely. Uh, got out Got out fine. Um, got to the exit and found that the taxi didn't wait for me. And I oh, left. My. Then when calling the taxi company, they said, Oh, um, you may have to wait an hour for another one to come back, and we're like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, By now, it looks yeah. like two, two. This must be two hours in now. So yeah. then they said, "Okay, what we'll do is we'll get your train back to Cambridge, but this time they will they will redirect the train to go on the platform that allows you to get to the exit." Got back on the train back to Cambridge. Um, got out of the train. And it wasn't even funny, but the lift had been fixed by the time I got back. Yeah. Um, got out, said to the taxi people, wanted to get a taxi to the party. Um, and But my friend was like, you know, because we're so late, we want to make sure we get back because we had to get home that same day. Yeah. Um, talk, spoke to the taxi driver. He said, yeah, I can get you there, but there's no guarantee I'm going to get you back. Um, because even Ooh. if you order it, you have to still wait an hour from the time that you've ordered it. Um, and there's no guarantee. Um, so there was a bit of back and forth with that. And then it just got to a point now where it's like, you know what, there's no point getting so far and then realizing that we're not going to get home again. Yeah, so yeah. we had to stay within the Cambridge station. So this was about four or five hours now. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Went to a local restaurant, came, wanted to go back. Um, and there was train delays and, um, different things that were happening. And once I got back, eventually got back to London, no one was there to meet me again. So it was like, no, no. Yeah. So it was like all within that one week of, you know, the very high of disability and what can be achieved to right. the reality. It kind of like the reality sat back in. It was like, oh yeah, back to reality. Yeah. Like, there's all of these obstacles um and i was on the news talking about it and um the radio talking about what happened but yeah all within the same week of a high and low a week yeah. i won't forget <laughs> absolutely no and that's just terrible and shouldn't be like that at all and do, do you think actually that you know um anything will change as a result of what happened obviously you know you 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 you, you shared your your thoughts on that and it kind of obviously went even went as far as going on the news and and, and whatnot so do you think actually people will listen and, and anything will change so that the experience don't happen to you or anyone else see i see that and again it goes back to um perspective now throughout the whole situation i was i was obviously frustrated that this is happening but i wasn't angry and the reason yeah. I wasn't angry is because, for one, the staff who were trying to help me were as frustrated as I was because they said, yeah. this lift is always going out and we always have to deal with this. So they yeah. weren't very happy. So it's kind of like a shared frustration. But also, I wanted to... Um, it's funny because for the first time when something like this was unfolding, I was like, okay, I'm not going to publicly mention anything about this. I want to see yeah. if I can sort something out. But my friend who had kind of like traveled me for the first time in this in this uh, capacity was so angry. She was filming it on Instagram and doing all yeah. of these stories. Yeah. And yeah. it was understandable. Like she was she was angry like this was happening. Um, and that got the attention of someone that she was connected with from ITV and yeah. Cambridge Radio to um, highlight the issue. But yeah, I wanted to kind of direct my energy into positive change rather than, yeah. oh my gosh, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, I was like, you know, luckily I've got this mindset, but for some people, and this was what I was worried about, is some people, they may never want to travel again. Um, yeah. And that's yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. thing you want to hear or see people who see something like this. It's like, oh, I better not, I can't travel because I may get stuck on the train or when it comes yeah. to flying, it's like, Oh, I, I don't know if my chair is going to break. And that's the worst yeah, yeah. thing I like. I don't like hearing because yeah. there's such a vast world out there and 
for most of the time it goes very well. It's just these, yeah. when it goes wrong, it goes very wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. kind of channeling it to like positive change. Um, yeah. And it just brought more awareness to people, which is good too. Yeah, I think you're right. I think <clears throat> as, as we as we mentioned earlier, you know, you said you, how you kind of, I guess, relay that back. You know, whether that's from that position of of kind of like anger, or whether it's which is rightly so. You know, as you say, it's a right. You know, that that that's not kind of saying that's not the wrong emotion to express, or whether that's like you've kind of um, set out that kind of real kind of growth mindset um a positive approach towards this who's going to engage which you're going to which is the other part you're going to engage with more the positive growth perspective or the kind of anger i mm. think people are going to be more likely to engage with, with yourself with that kind of mindset to create positive change than they are if someone's kind of like even though it's right rightly vented that kind of anger and stuff because ultimately then someone's going to get quite defensive and it's going to be harder to kind of like make change and for people to listen and to kind of understand Whereas if you actually come in it from that positive perspective, I think people are much more likely to engage and, and kind of go, mm. you know, what are you right? We need to do something about this and make changes, right? I think that's Absolutely. that's, but well, that's not an easy thing to 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 do either, is it? You know, it's it's no. it's, it's, no, it's absolutely not. Especially if you're in that situation at the time it's happening, um, it can be a lot to uh, a lot of emotions and things to deal with um yeah yeah no, yeah sure. I, 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 and don't get me wrong like you said you know anger has made some real changes to people's lives and yeah. perspectives you know i feel anger is an emotion that is is very valid to every other emotion yeah. um yeah, yeah. i just feel it's how you uh portray that anger um yeah because if you're just going to be shouting and screaming um to yeah, a point yeah. where you're not list well it depends if the person's worth listening to, but I was going to say, yeah. um, if you're just shouting and screaming without any dialogue, I think that's when people shut off and don't want to engage. Um, yeah. So I think it's just how you kind of channel that anger or the frustration or the sadness or the um, all these different emotions, how you channel it is, is the most important. It's like, what what am I really going to get out of this by being yeah. angry? Um, and how can I make change so it doesn't happen again? Yeah. Or teaching that's... moment. Yeah, yeah. And no, I think I think it's spot on. I think it's a really, really great reflection. Tell us about a really positive experience that you've had then recently. Oh, um I mean I could talk about what will be a positive experience. Um I, I, I could talk about happening yeah, this year. Yeah. Yeah, go for so, it. So yeah so um so i'm a so as i mentioned very briefly so i'm president of an organization called wheels and wheelchairs uh yeah. at, where rose gates to push wheelchair users um and we go out on a weekly basis um around london um skating with groups um on a saturday in battersea park with a small group and then on sundays we go on the streets of london and it's really great fun and it's a community that I've felt really included in um, because it's one of those uh, events that we've all come from like different backgrounds, but we all just come to have fun. Um, yeah. And it's also another thing that I've really from the get go is, you know, I'm in a wheelchair and they're on skates. Yeah. If the surface is bad, we all suffer. If it's great, we all have a good time. Yeah. So it's um, really a, great collective event and we're doing a huge challenge happening in august this year where we're going to be um doing a challenge skating from brighton all the way to paris for the start wow. of the paralympic games Amazing. Um, and it's a very special skate because um 12 years ago when wills and wheelchairs started a French group doing similar activities challenged themselves to skate from Paris to London for the start of the Paralympic Games here. Yeah. So yeah. now everything's coming full circle where we're now skating there. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have a minimum of 40 skaters. We're planning to have at least seven to eight wheelchair users. 
a lot of crew to support and yeah, it's a good four day challenge, but I feel it'd be very awarding, rewarding yeah. at the end of it and how we can do something collectively. Um, and hopefully kind of create a big impact of like that collectiveness thing we've been speaking yeah. about throughout this whole conversation, yeah, yeah. um, kind of just showing what happens when all forces come together and what we're able to achieve. I think that'd be, yeah, really cool and a very memorable moment. I know it's happened yet, but I think it's going to be saying that it's going to go down in history. Oh, amazing. And yeah, no, thank you for sharing that with us and with our listeners and any information that you've got on, on that, Isaac, anything that we can promote and, and put in the, the podcast links or share, more, more than happy to do that um, as well. And any other like the, uh, the the purple disability um, awareness day as well. And we'll put links to that in the show notes and, and any other information for the listeners. But I think I did say, didn't I? <clears throat> I think you, you touched on a really good point about the, the collectiveness and, and that's kind of how we progress <clears throat> this conversation as well. It's collectively um, together we progress, don't we? Rather yeah. than, you know, it's, 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 it's our differences that unite us, isn't it? Rather than, than divide us. I Absolutely. think that's, a, a really nice way i'd like to kind of finish out on on our conversation <laughs> today and i did say i did say to isaac and i'll try to keep it to 45 minutes and in true <laughs> mike bedford style of i've completely blown that already i've completely failed on that and we're <laughs> nearly nearly just under an hour now but i just think this conversation has been so valuable and, and i've learned so much from this conversation and, and i hope our listeners uh have too so uh yeah. Any final thoughts, uh, Isaac? Any kind of final messages or thoughts for our listeners who are, who are joining us today, maybe for the first time or regular listeners? Um, I've, I've heard with this conversation, it just shows, you know, everyone has a story and I think everyone should value their own stories and know that people are there to listen to you in any capacity and just be you because who else is going to do it for you? Yeah. Fantastic way to to close out the show, Isaac. Thank you uh, so much for uh, for sharing everything with us today and for being awesome. such a, a valued guest on on the podcast. I've I've really enjoyed um, getting to know you and talking to you both before and on, on the podcast. I look forward to being connected and having many more conversations with you going forwards too, as well. But if if people you know who are listening want to kind of connect with you or or, or find out where you are, how can they do that? Yeah, so I mean, I am on all social medias, but LinkedIn is the place where people can follow me. Um, I post there on a regular basis, uh, talking about the different things that I get up to and the different collaborations that I'm a part of. And uh, yeah, happy to connect on there. Brilliant. And I'll post links again to to Isaac's LinkedIn profile in the show notes and, and recommend people to do take Isaac up on, on that kind offer and connect with him as well because uh, you've, got, you've got a lot to learn um, from, from what Isaac does and, and what Isaac says as well. Always worth listening to. So once again, Isaac, thank you so much for being for being a guest. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Yes. No, thank you so much for having me. I, I love a good conversation. And uh, especially if someone can take something away from it as well, I think it's really important. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to do a part two because there's so much more to talk about. It feels like it. It feels it feels like there's probably much more to come. Watch this space. <laughs> I'd say on, on, on that one. There may be a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. Once again, thanks so much to Isaac, and thanks you so much to our listeners as well who who, who, have, who have joined in and tuned in and, and listening to us. And if you're enjoying the podcast, don't forget to uh, to like and to subscribe to the podcast you can be kept up to date with uh, with all the latest episodes and goings on and uh, and thank you for for joining us and and, and take care and, and bye for now bye bye